Admiral Kuznetsov is currently the only aircraft carrier in the Russian fleet, and like most of its significant units, it is a legacy of the former Soviet Union. One significant fact that is often overlooked is the official designation of the ship, TAKR, which stands for Heavy Aircraft Carrying Cruiser when translated into English. While the commonly stated reason for this designation is compliance with the Montreux Convention, which prohibits the passage of aircraft carriers through the Bosphorus, there are two potentially more weighty reasons that explain this designation. The first reason dates back to the Soviet era when communist regime propaganda defined aircraft carriers as offensive elements within the United States' aggression strategy. Under this reasoning, their aircraft carrying cruisers were defensive vessels. Implicitly, this reasoning led to the second motive. The ship's primary function was to attack enemy surface units with its missile battery while protecting its own submarines, with the embarked aircraft serving as a secondary defense weapon. In 1973, Admiral Gorshkov, the chief of the Soviet Navy, proposed to the party committee the development of an 80,000-ton nuclear aircraft carrier with the aim of having three operational units by 1986. The ship would have had steam catapults, a cable arresting system, and would embark an air wing equipped with fighters, attack aircraft, and anti-submarine aircraft. Instead of starting this project, it was decided to continue with the Kiev class, authorizing the construction of the third member of the class under a modified project called 1143.3. Admiral Gorshkov, an advocate for the development of carriers equivalent to those of the Americans, ordered the continued development of a new aircraft carrier project under the designation 1153, derived from the previous 1160 project. The new project would displace 70,000 tons and would be nuclear-powered. It would feature Su-27K and MiG-23K fighters, among other aircraft, using steam catapults. Once again, the project was discarded in 1977, and the construction of the Baku, the fourth unit of the Kiev class, was authorized. The Baku incorporated several modifications and was designated as Project 1143.4. The next aircraft carrier was planned as a significantly larger vessel than the Kiev class, equipped with the Yak-41 for vertical takeoff and better performance than the Yak-38. Additionally, it would embark the Su-27K and MiG-29K, with catapults and arresting cables, as well as various variants of the Ka-27 helicopter. Later, there was consideration for the design, designated as Project 1143.5, to operate early warning aircraft and 71 and anti-submarine aircraft P-423. In 1981, the project was downsized, and the use of steam catapults was abandoned. Instead, the embarked aircraft would use a ski jump for takeoff, initially, rocket-assisted takeoff was considered. Finally, in September 1982, the keel of the ship was laid down at the Nikolaev shipyards, and it was launched in December 1985, a relatively short time for a vessel of its size and complexity, as well as being the first of its class. Few modern military vessels are known to have received as many names throughout their lives, which may be the cause of the ill fate that has accompanied the ship. It was initially named Riga, but its name was changed during its construction to Leonid Brezhnev. After its launch, it was renamed Tbilisi. Finally, on October 4, 1990, it received its final name, Admiral of the Fleet of the Soviet Union Kuznetsov. The ship's design is conventional, with a fully clear flight deck of 14,800 square meters, finished with a 14.3-degree ramp at the bow to facilitate the takeoff of the embarked aircraft. The only structure is a large island on the port side that houses the main electronic systems and the chimney. The hull is constructed with high-strength steel with a yield strength of 60 kg force per square millimeter. It has a double bottom that runs the entire length of the hull. The main components of the ship are made of steel, using aluminum and magnesium alloys for secondary structures. The deck and other elements are protected by composite armor consisting of a layer of steel, a layer of fiberglass, and another layer of steel, with unknown thicknesses. The aviation fuel tanks and ammunition magazines are also armored. Submarine protection is carefully designed with armored longitudinal bulkheads and elaborate compartmentation to ensure the ship's survival against damage and flooding. Buoyancy is guaranteed even with five adjacent flooded compartments, 
with a total length of at least 20% of the ship's length. In this situation, the deck level of the hangar must remain 1.8 meters above the water to prevent flooding. The maximum beam on the flight deck is 67 meters, with the island counterbalancing the overhang of the flight deck. The island is angled, with a 7-degree angle relative to the ship's centerline. The landing strip has a length of 205 meters and a width of 26 meters. To stop the aircraft during landing, there is a Svetlana 2 system equipped with four cables spaced 12 meters apart, connected to hydraulic brakes designed to ensure the complete stopping of the aircraft after a 90-meter run after engaging the cable, with a longitudinal overload of no more than 4.5 gs. The first cable is located 40 meters from the start of the runway in the stern. The fourth cable, located further forward, is combined with an emergency barrier called Nadezhda. To serve as a reference for pilots, a white circle with a diameter of 17 meters was drawn in the center of the second cable to indicate the recommended location for the aircraft, with the extended hook, to touch down on the deck when landing. There is a guidance system for pilots during the approach phase. The entire deck surface is protected to withstand temperatures up to 450 degrees Celsius, with three 10 by 10 meter zones originally intended for the landing of Yak-41 aircraft, covered with AK-9 FM plates capable of withstanding temperatures up to 750 degrees Celsius. For aircraft takeoff, there are three points, two just ahead of the forward elevator, with a takeoff run of 90 meters, and the third behind the fourth arresting cable on the port side, with a takeoff run of 180 meters. Each of these takeoff points has a water-cooled pressure screen to divert the hot engine gases and a system of holdback bars that secure the aircraft until it has reached maximum afterburner, releasing it at that moment to allow the aircraft to start the takeoff run at maximum available power. The aircraft carrier has an enclosed hangar with an area of 3,800 square meters. Its dimensions are 153 meters in length, 26 meters in width, and a height of 7.2 meters, accounting for over 50% of the ship's length and 70% of its beam. The hangar can be divided into four zones by three fire screens. Two elevators, with a capacity of 40 tons each, allow for the movement of aircraft between the hangar and the deck. The elevators are located on the starboard side, cantilevered, in front of and behind the island. The crew consists of 1,980 personnel. The propulsion system is conventional, consisting of boilers and steam turbines derived from those used on the Baku. It has proven to be one of the ship's most problematic aspects, to the extent that it has had to be permanently accompanied by tugboats during recent deployments. Steam is generated by 8 kVG4 boilers operating at a pressure of 66 kg per square meter and a temperature of 470 degrees Celsius. The total steam generated is 115 tons per hour. The ship uses steam generated by these boilers for its services and does not have auxiliary boilers. For TW-124 turbines with a total power of 200,000 horsepower are capable of propelling the ship at a maximum speed of 29 knots. It is equipped with four fixed-pitch bronze propellers, each with five blades and a diameter of 4.26 meters. The weight of each propeller is 12.5 tons. The ship has a range of 8,000 nautical miles at an economical speed of 18 knots. One of the characteristics of Admiral Kuznetsov is the large amounts of smoke generated by its boilers. Although there is always talk of the poor combustion of these boilers, the main cause of the smoke is the poor quality of the fuel used, known as mazut. The Russian Navy uses this fuel due to its low cost. The armament of the Admiral Kuznetsov is very comprehensive, featuring an array of anti-ship missiles and a complete anti-aircraft defense system. The presence of anti-ship missiles on an aircraft carrier is a characteristic unique to the Soviet Navy, with the Italian Giuseppe Garibaldi being the only equivalent, which initially carried four Otomat anti-ship missiles during its operational career. The presence of these missiles indicates that the use of the embarked air wing is more focused on defensive rather than offensive tasks. The ship has a total of 12 P-700 Granite 3M-45 anti-ship missiles, SSN-19 shipwreck in NATO designation. These missiles are launched from 12 silos located at the beginning of the ski jump, flush with the flight deck. 
Each silo has an upward opening hatch for missile launch. The ejection mechanism uses compressed air to break a fiberglass cover, igniting the missile's engines once it is in the air, thereby avoiding damage to the silo and flight deck. The anti-aircraft defense is entrusted to three systems. For medium-range defense, the SAN-9 gauntlet system is used. For close-range defense, it carries eight CADs, N-1 Kashtan systems and 630mm AK-630 cannons. The SAN-9 gauntlet, designated as 3K-95 Kinshull by its builders, is an anti-aircraft defense system derived from the land-based SA-15 system. The system uses the same missile as the land-based version, the 9M330. The missiles are housed in vertical launchers grouped in modules of eight missiles each. The Admiral Kuznetsov carries 24 of these modules, totaling 192 missiles grouped in four sets with six modules each. The missile is launched using gas. It weighs 165 kilograms, has a maximum speed of Mach 2.5, and a range of 12 kilometers. The warhead weighs 15 kilograms and has a proximity and impact fuse. The missile is guided by command. The Cordic system, NATO designation CADS, N-1 Kashtan, is a short-range defense system against missiles, aircraft, and even guided bombs. It is a derivative of the land-based 2S-6M Tunguska system. The assembly integrates two GSH-630K cannons and two quadruple launchers for 9M311 missiles. The GSH-630K is a rotating six-barrel cannon with a caliber of 30 mm. It has a firing rate of 5,000 rounds per minute and a maximum range of 4 km. The 9M311 missile is propelled by a two-stage solid rocket. It has a maximum speed of Mach 2.6 and a range of 8 km. The warhead weighs 9 kg. The missile is guided by SACLOS. Each system carries 24 spare missiles. The AK-630 is an anti-missile gun mount. It is the Russian equivalent of the American Phalanx. It is a fully automatic system equipped with a rotating GSH-636 barrel 30mm cannon. The firing rate is 5,000 rounds per minute, and the maximum range is 4,000 meters. As for anti-submarine weaponry, there are only two RBU-12000 anti-submarine rocket launchers. The system is designed to be used against submarines, torpedoes, and frogmen using various types of rockets. Each launcher can hold 10 rockets with a caliber of 300 mm, with a practical range of 3,000 meters and a depth of 600 meters. The initially embarked detection systems were the best available in the Soviet Union. The main sensor is a three-dimensional air search radar called Mars Passat, complemented by an air and surface surveillance radar MR-750 Frigate MA. The communication and electronic warfare systems were very comprehensive when the ship entered service, as were the onboard sonars. The Mars Passat radar, NATO designation Skywatch, is a three-dimensional air search radar that provides target azimuth, range, and altitude information. The radar has four fixed antennas measuring 6 meters by 6 meters, with each providing 90 degrees of coverage. It was first seen on the heavy aircraft carrying cruiser Baku, later renamed Admiral Gorshkov, and subsequently on the Admiral Kuznetsov. It was the first Russian ship-borne radar with an electronically scanned array. Despite the Soviet experience with this type of radar, such as the Zaslan radar on the MiG-31 and the flap lid on the SA-10, the system took more than five years to become operational, with problems that apparently were never resolved, and it was never installed on any other Russian ship. The software of the system seems to have been the main cause of these problems. The Mark 750 Frigate MH, NATO designation Top Plate B, is a three-dimensional air and surface surveillance radar. It operates in the E and F bands. It has two opposing antennas optimized for two different frequency bands. The maximum range is about 300 kilometers. The Amart 320 Topaz is a surface search radar that operates in the S-band. Its NATO designation is Strut Pair. It has two Amart 302 Strut Curve antennas mounted one behind the other. Each antenna has a different elevation angle, allowing for approximate height determination. 
The Admiral Kuznetsov carries two of these radars. The Mark 302 Rubka M is an X band navigation radar. Its NATO designation is Palm Frond, and the ship has three of these radars installed. For submarine detection, there is an integrated sonar system with a low frequency MGK 355 Platina hull sonar, NATO designation Bullhorn, and a variable depth sonar, NATO designation Horse Jaw. The embarked electronic warfare system consists of 8 foot ball systems, 4 wine flask systems, 5 flat track systems, and 10 ball shield systems. For decoy launching, both radar and infrared, there are 10 PK-10 systems and 4 PK-2 systems. For watch guard systems are used for friend or foe identification. The capacity for aircraft embarkation and operation is limited compared to the size of the ship, especially when compared to American aircraft carriers, even though they are considerably larger. Initially, it was planned for the aircraft carrier to operate with Su-33 fighters, MiG-29K, and the VSTOL Yak-141 model, in addition to the Su-25 UTG training aircraft and various variants of the Ka-27 helicopter. Developing three aircraft with similar functions for a small air group is counterproductive. The fall of the Soviet Union and the drastic budget reduction forced the cancellation of the Yak-141 and, in a more political than operational decision, the MiG-29K, leaving the Su-33, along with a few Su-25 training units, as the only operational fixed-wing aircraft aboard the aircraft carrier. The maximum aircraft capacity of the ship is 50, 26 Su-27 fighters, 18 Ka-27 anti-submarine helicopters, 4 Ka-31 AEW helicopters, and 2 Ka-27 PS search and rescue helicopters. In practice, during the few deployments made far from its home base, the number of embarked aircraft has been much lower than the theoretical maximum, among other reasons because only 26 Su-33s were built. Russian Navy publications state that the aircraft complement is 12 Su-27s and 24 helicopters. With the entry into service in 2014 of a batch of 20 MiG-29KRs and 4 MiG-29Cubers, derived from those acquired by India, the aircraft carrier's capabilities were significantly improved, both in terms of the number of available aircraft and the capabilities of the MiG, especially in ground attack and naval warfare.